how would I explain this run in one sentence? Hmm. Too much water and not enough options. Hello everybody, my name is BP Nuzlocke and today I'll be attempting to beat a Pokemon Ruby Hardcore Nuzlocke with only Fire type Pokemon. In this run we'll have access to only 4 Fire type Pokemon as Torkoal and Slugma can only be found in the Fiery Path. This run has to be the hardest one yet, so definitely hit that like button and let me know in the comments who your favourite fire type Pokemon is. Mine is definitely Litwick since it's just so freaking cute and its story is super sad. But as for the rules, they'll be in the description below, but all the same rules as all our other videos. And uh, yeah, let's just get into the run. We start off this grand adventure by saving this random middle-aged man from a rabid puppy. We obviously pick Torchic to help us in fending it off, and after a couple of scratches, we officially have Izuku the Torchic. And I hope you like him because he's all you'll be seeing for a while. We quickly deal with Mei and head to our first major roadblock of the run, Roxanne. Now, remember those other three encounters? Well, we can't get any of them until we've beaten Watson. And since the level cap for Roxanne is level 15, we can't evolve Torchic either. So we're in for a world of hurt. But enough stalling, let's see how it goes. She starts with Geodude as we start with Izuku. I go for a Growl in an attempt to tank Rock Tomb a bit better, but it still leaves us on 16 HP, proccing our Orenberry and lowering our speed. Geodude then sets up a Defense Curl as we start our Ember Spam. Izuku lands a crit, giving us at least some hope for the fight. She still uses Defense Curl and another Ember puts her in Potion range, and without the crit, we are struggling to whittle Geodude down, as she keeps spamming Defense Curl. We bring her back into potion range, but now at max defense, she goes for a rock throw, leaving us at 4 HP, but we do eventually take the Geodude out with another Ember. With the speed drop, her nose pass outspeeds us and hits us with a rock tomb, ending attempt 1. This took me a whole nother 6 attempts before I finally got a winning run. Now I won't lie, the luck to win this fight is insane. We start by using 2 Growls as she misses 2 rock tombs in a row. We then set up a focus energy as Geodude misses its a third rock tomb. We use Ember as she sets up defense curl and on the next turn she misses yet again, bring, being her fourth rock tomb miss of the fight. We eventually get the crit as she eventually hits the rock tomb. Roxanne then uses the potion but thanks to a lucky burn we take out her Geodude with a few more embers. She brings in her ace nose pass and misses a sixth rock tomb of the fight as we land a growl. I go for a second growl because I notice the AI likes to buff themselves up when you lower their stats, so hopefully this will make her use harder more. And thanks to my multiple growls, her rock throws are doing less damage, and we can finally start to use Ember. Our first one crits and gets the burn, which is perfect, but our rock throw leaves Izuku on 8 HP. She lands another one, bringing us down to just 1 HP, and with their outspeeding, this is almost a guaranteed loss, but she goes for tackle and misses. I don't like to swear in this channel, but holy sh**. We were blessed by all the gods in the world for this fight. I feel a bit bad, but without that extreme luck, I don't think we would have beaten Roxanne without going over the level cap. And with, if it, and with Izuku evolved in 7 Roxanne attempts, we can finally move on to Brawly. Brawly starts with the Chop, which takes a peck quite comfortably, as it sets up a bulk up. I go for Ember since Machop now has a defense boost, but it doesn't do enough as Machop lands a Karate Chop, doing just under 50%, and one last Ember takes it out. Brawly brings out his Makahita, as we smack it with our Chicken Feet, doing some really good damage. He then hits one Thrust, two Thrusts, crits on the third, and the fourth Arm Thrust leaves Izuku on 2 HP. That was terrifying, but another Double Kick clutches out our second badge. Whew. Another really clutch gym fight, holy crap. With Brawly out of the way, we run into some magma turds and quickly clean them up. And now it's time for Rival Fight 2, and here we'll make good use of our new bulk up TM. She starts with Shroomish as we start to show off our gym progress with some bulk ups. Shroomish hits us with a stun sport, making the sweep a lot less consistent. I get off another bulk up as Shroomish misses a tackle. Now it's time to attack. Shroomish lands a leech seed as we one shot it with a peck. Next is our big hitter Marsh Top, who goes for Bide, which is terrifying, as we land a double kick, bringing it down to the red. Now, if we get full parried, the run is over, but thankfully we break through and land another double kick, and then last up is her Numal. 
we get full parried twice, leaving us on just 9 HP as we finally move and one-shot Numa with a double kick. Whew, my god, can we just have one chill fight, please? Unfortunately not, as we have the hardest fight of the run, Wally. Holy, barely got through that one alive. Enough messing around, we finally made it to Watson. I start off by hitting his Magnemite with the Ember, which brings it into potion range. So as he heals, I decide to set up a free bulk up, and this allows Double Kick to pick up the KO. Next is his Voltorb, which somehow lives a plus one Double Kick and hits us with the Sonic Boom. Watson heals, but this next Double Kick actually finishes it off this time, meaning it was probably a low roll. Last is his Magneton, which outspeeds and leaves Izuku on 12 HP, but a plus one double kick is enough to knock it out. With Watson defeated, we can catch some new friends. We catch Orange, the Numal, and Christine, the Torkoal, and with our new friends, we can take on Maxi. We lead Christine, who is unaffected by Intimidate thanks to its White Smoke ability, and we get the first turn power with Body Slam. This allows me to safely switch into Izuku, and after setting up three bulk ups, we sweep through Maxi's team. Next up is Flannery, but Orange quickly proves we are the better fire type master, as we roll really high magnitude numbers, completely stomping her team. Now it's time to beat our dad, since we never did get that milk. Christine has access to both Protect and Curse, so by using Protect on Slacking's active turns, and Curse on its loathing turns, we easily get to max attack and defense, allowing Christine to two shot slacking. But I messed up and we did get hit by a yawn. Next is Vigoroff, which falls to a crit body slam, bringing Norman down to his last slacking as Christine falls asleep. But thanks to our defense boosts, we eat a bunch of focus punches and eventually wake up. And with two body slams, we get revenge for the bowl of Fruit Loops promised to us all those years ago. With Para, the way we quickly clear out the Weather Institute and beat May for the third time, making our way to Steven who shows us the sneaky Kecleon, and after murdering the cheeky bugger, Orange evolves into Camerupt. With the new Orange, we can take on the sixth gym. She starts off with Swellow, who eats a mouthful of rocks from Orange and barely lives. I set up an Amnesia on the heel, so we have a better chance of living Pelipper's water moves. I take another Aerial Lace as a high roll rock slide takes out Swellow. I kind of troll on the Pelipper as it goes for Protect, and then predicting a second Protect, I set up an Amnesia, but she goes for Water Gun instead, dealing a good chunk of damage. I take another Water Gun as Rock Slide does around 50% to Pelipper, but now we have to switch. I bring in Inzuku, who finishes off Pelipper with two secret powers. She brings in Skarmory, so I switch into Christine, who one shots Skarmory with a Flamethrower. She then brings in Altaria, who sets up a Dragon Dance, but Christine gets the Body Slam power, allowing us to slowly but surely take out Altaria and win us the 6th sixth, sixth badge. With access to Mount Pyre, we can catch our final team member, Silver the Vulpix, who we quickly evolve into Ninetales, and with our new powerhouse, it's time to take on the Psychic Twins, Tate and Liza. While grinding to the level cap, Izuku evolves, bringing our team to its final form, and I wish I could say the Tate and Liza battle was insane, intense, but I really just stalled them with will o wisp burns and confusions, so um, they just eventually died to that and like flamethrower chip. I, I don't really know how to commentate over it. It's um, I kind of just press, I just kind of press buttons and it ended up working. To be to be honest with you, I, I don't I don't know what to say. It was really it was just a really boring one. So uh. We'll, We'll skip it for the most part, but I'll let it I'll let it play in fast motion if you you really curious on how I did it. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's move on. We try telling Maxi that giving the red Pokemon the blue orb is stupid, and he doesn't like that very much, so we have to convince him. He starts with Mighty Anna as we start with Christine. He uses Swagger as I try to set up a curse. Christine then hits herself in confusion as Mighty Anna uses Raw and brings out Tentacruel. Well. This is awkward. Tentacruel isn't a fire type, so of course we are forced to switch into Orange, who gets a plus two from Mighty Anna's swagger. So Earthquake one shots Mighty Anna and then his own camera up. Next is Crobat, who outspeeds and hits us with a wing attack as Orange hits herself in confusion, forcing me to switch into Silver. 
and after taking two air cutters, Silver burns Crobat with Will-O-Wisp, cutting its damage by half. Silver tanks a wing attack and retaliates with a flamethrower. I switch into Christine, fearing an air cutter crit. Maxi then potions as Christine lands a flamethrower, bringing him into potion range again. Crobat lands a Confuse Ray and Christine hits herself in confusion. I go for Protect and let the burn damage finish off Crobat. And he gives it the blue orb anyway. Idiot. After dealing with the mass drought, it's time for one of the hardest fights yet. The water gym leader Wallace. I start with Silver and he starts with Love Disc. Silver burns his Love Disc as it confuses Silver with a sweet kiss. Silver hits himself with confusion as Love Disc lands a beefy water pulse. Silver breaks through in the next turn however and then lands a Confuse Ray as Love Disc uses a tract on Silver. I set up a sunny day as Love Disc snaps out of confusion on the first turn and hits us with a water pulse but it's doing a lot less damage now. With the sun up I switch into Izuku and Love Disc's water pulses do little damage. Now we can start setting up with bulk ups. And after getting 4 bulk ups we can begin to attack. Double kick takes out Love Disc, Celio. Wish Cash, Sea King, and finally, one last double kick takes out my low tick. We're pretty lucky to get through Wallace with zero deaths, but hey, uh, Bulk Ups never failed us before. We have one last challenge before the Elite Four, and that's Wally, and Orange will be essential for this fight. So that's who we lead with, as Wally leads with Altaria. He sets up a safeguard as Rock Slide does 50%. I thought he might heal, so I used his chance to set up an Amnesia. Altaria sets up a D-Dance, but our next Rock Slide crits, taking it out. And next is his Delcaddy, but two Earthquakes take it out with no issues. Magneton is the next one to fall to just a single EQ. And then Roselia also just dies to one EQ. Last is his Ace Gardevoir, who quickly falls to two EQs without using any attacking moves. So that was pretty easy. So my recordings for the first three Elite Four battles were corrupted and I don't really recall how the turns went so this is my very hazy animated Elite Four run. So uh, in first up is Sydney who is probably the easiest of these Elite Four members. I start off with Silver, I set up Sunny Day and then it's basically just a flamethrower sweep from here as all of his Pokemon are super brittle. So uh, yeah, that one's pretty easy. Next is Phoebe. And uh, I'm pretty sure Camera for the most part just did a lot of damage with eruptions and earthquakes. And then last off is Glacier. So this time I start off with Izuku and I start setting up bulk ups and after enough bulk ups double kick just sweeps through her team. And uh, now we're up to the real Elite Four member Drake. Joy! Now for the hardest battle yet, Drake. We have just about zero good moves versus dragon types and no safe way to set up with Izuku, but let's just get into it. He starts with Shellgon and I with Silver. We burn it with Will-O-Wisp and then we hit a Confuse Ray and Shellgon hits itself in the first turn. I then go for a Flamethrower for damage as Shellgon lands a Rock Tomb. I knew Drake would full restore so I use Will-O-Wisp again and then Confuse Ray again as it misses a Rock Tomb. And after that two more Flamethrowers finish off Shellgon. Next is his Flygon who sets up a Sandstorm as Silver burns it. He then goes for Dig but thanks to the burn we live but it does get the crit bringing us into red as I set up a Sunny Day. Flygon outspeeds the next turn though and ends Silver's life with a Dragon Breath. I send in Izuku and Flygon sets up a Sandstorm allowing it to tank a Blaze Kick but another Blaze Kick tanks it out in the following turn. Then in comes big boy Salamance. Not wanting to eat a fly, I switch into Christine and land a Toxic. He hits a Dragon Claw and brings Christine to 9 HP, proccing our Orinberry, as I hit a pitiful Flamethrower. I go for a Protect to store the Toxic damage, and then I try to get a double Protect but fail, and thus a Crunch takes out Christine. I bring in, I bring in Izuku as Salamence dies to Toxic Poison in the air. I panic a bit as he brings in Flygon and use two bulk ups as he lands two Dragon Breaths. I use Strength and it does around 50% as one last Dragon Breath takes out Izuku. Now it's all up to Orange. An Eruption finishes off Flygon after taking a Dragon Breath and last his Altaria which just falls to two Rock Slides ending this brutal fight. We went from zero deaths to losing three of our four team members. Pretty rough but uh, let's see if Camera Up can just Solo the Elite Four.
No.